Eleven people were ritually killed and eaten in a cave in Spain 5,700 years ago. Nearly 2,000 years ago, Roman soldiers ran into a tunnel only to be killed with an ancient chemical weapon. And a couple digging under their driveway found a hidden German World War II bunker. These are disturbing discoveries made deep underground. In a cave in northern Spain called El Mirador, archaeologists found the remains of 11 people who were killed and eaten around 5,700 years ago. When they looked closely at the bones, they saw clear blade marks, burn marks, and human bite marks. One of the most shocking finds was a child's leg bone that had been cracked open to get the marrow out. Antonio Rodriguez Hidalgo, one of the scientists who studied the bones, said this sort of thing happened more often than most people think back then, but this wasn't a case of famine. All 11 people died around the same time, and there's no sign that food was scarce. The evidence points to something darker, a kind of war ritual. The people who died probably belonged to an enemy group, and eating them might have been a way to wipe them out completely, both physically and spiritually. The cave sits in an area called Atapuerca, which has a long history of other discoveries like this. In fact, researchers say it's become the capital of people eating each other from back then because of how many ancient bones with cut marks have been found there. And the oldest cases go back nearly a million years. Almost 2,000 years ago, 19 Roman soldiers ran into a cramped underground tunnel outside the Syrian city of Dura Europos ready to stop a Persian army from digging under the city walls. But instead of the enemy, they were met with a wall of black smoke that turned to acid in their lungs. They choked and died almost instantly. Simon James, a historian who looked at old excavation sketches from the 1930s, said, This was a deliberate pile of bodies. The Romans had steered their tunnel to intercept the Persians, but the attackers had set a trap, lighting a fire with sulfur and bitumen that filled the tunnels with toxic fumes. Adrian Mayer, a historian at Stanford, explained that chemical warfare was not unknown back then. Ancient armies were pretty creative. Greeks burned feathers and blew the smoke into tunnels, and Alexander the Great's enemies once heated sand and catapulted it at his troops. So the Persians using smoke as a weapon? Totally plausible, Mayer said. When Sean and Carolyn Tullier bought their house in Guernsey back in 2021, they had no idea there was a secret Third Reich bunker sitting 26 feet feet below their driveway. Guernsey on the Channel Islands was occupied by German forces during World War II, and the couple knew the area had military history, but this was something else. It all started when a woman who used to live in the house messaged Sean on Facebook after seeing one of his marketplace listings. She asked if he'd found the rooms below the house yet. Then Sean was like, there are rooms? That set off a dig that took weeks. Sean and a friend used an excavator to move over a hundred tons of dirt until, as he put it, their ground just gave way and this doorway appeared. Inside, they found what looked like a preserved wartime hideout, a bunch of rooms lined with bottles, rusted tins, and an escape hatch, of course. And on one wall in faded German letters were the words, Achtung Fiend Hort Mit, meaning beware the enemy is listening. The couple ended up turning the place into a games room. This past July in Lima, Peru, workers were digging trenches to expand an underground gas network when they discovered two pre-Incan tombs, one empty and the other holding a body about 1,000 years old. Along with the skeleton were four clay pots and three carved pumpkin shells, probably used for storing food or offerings. Archaeologist Jose Aliaga said the designs and colors on the pots, quote, allow us to establish a connection with the pre-Incan Chancay culture, which lived right roughly between 1,000 and 1,470 years ago. The person was sitting with their legs pulled up to their chest. Aliaga and his team are carefully cleaning the remains, studying every detail they can. Lima, which is home to 10 million people, sits over hundreds of pre-Inca and Inca sites, so discoveries like this aren't necessarily rare even. There's a sinkhole in southern Mexico that nobody in the nearby villages will go near. They call it Sac Oyum. Back in 2014, archaeologist Bradley Russell and his team decided to dive into it. And what they found was hair raising. It became immediately obvious why there were so many ominous warnings and legends surrounding this place. There were bones, Lots of them. From the very first dive, we had seen skulls, Russell said. Getting down wasn't easy, either. They had to rappel 40 feet past huge scalactites and long tree roots. In the first chamber, skulls, ribs, and long bones were scattered across the floor. One skull, probably a woman's, had been flattened on top, a Maya custom. A horseshoe-shaped jaw nearby showed it belonged to a young adult, teeth still perfect. The second chamber was darker and even creepier 
completely underwater and twice the size of the first, it held at least five more skulls, along with bones that had tumbled down after a chunk of the floor collapsed. And the way Russell describes exploring this place is, uh, is terrifying. This is very technical diving, he said. You're crawling on your belly with your tanks against the ceiling, and there's no popping to the surface if something goes wrong. Now, why were all these bones down there? You know, why was this specific sinkhole believed to be such an ominous place for hundreds and hundreds of years? Russell thinks the people down there may have been plague victims, saying you wouldn't want them near the rest of the population, and you wouldn't want to drink the water either. Makes sense. High up in the cliffs of Israel's Judean desert, there's a cave that's earned a grim nickname, the Cave of Horror. The outside, it doesn't look like much, but inside, it's twisting with low passages that open into chambers. Inside, archaeologists found the skeletons of 40 people, men, women, and children who'd been hiding during a revolt around 132 to 136 CE. These were Jewish rebels and their families, researchers said. They were hiding from the Romans, who'd set up camp on the cliffs above. They also found pieces of really old scrolls, including coins and a Greek copy of the Book of the Twelve. In 2021, new fragments turned up, written in Greek, but with God's name Yahweh in old Hebrew letters. Some of the text didn't even match the Bible that we know today. In the garden, just a few meters from Leicester Cathedral, archaeologists found something very disturbing. Buried in a narrow vertical shaft were the remains of 123 men, women, and children. The bones date back over 800 years to the early 12th century. No one knows exactly why so many ended up in that tiny pit. According to Matthew Morris, who worked on the dig, their bones show no signs of violence, which leaves us with two alternative reasons for these deaths, starvation or pestilence. At the moment, the latter is our main working hypothesis. It looks as if successive cartloads of bodies were brought to the shaft and then dropped into it, one load on top of another in a very short space of time. He also estimated that the people in that pit made up about 5% of the town's population at the time. First, the team thought the pit might be connected to the Black Death, but radiocarbon dating places this more than 150 years earlier than that. That was surprising, Morris said. As far as we know, the bubonic plague did not reach our shores until 13 48. So what was the cause of the mass deaths that occurred then, end quote. Even though the cause is still a mystery, there are hints about what life was like in Leicester back then. The bodies weren't just thrown into the pit. There was no sign of clothing, but their limbs were still together, which could mean they'd been wrapped shrouds beforehand. While crews were widening a busy road in eastern England, archaeologists came across a massive stone coffin that had been buried for over a thousand years. The coffin, weighing about 1,650 pounds, had been sitting along what was once a very important Roman route connecting towns and military outposts. David Harrison from Headland Archaeology said it was a fascinating find, and it's easy to see why. Stone coffins from this period almost never survive intact. Excavating it was tough. Teams of archaeologists and engineers worked for months carefully lifting a document in the coffin to make sure nothing inside got damaged. The size and craftsmanship seems to show probably belonged to someone pretty important. Back in 2016, archaeologists in France dug into a pit full of severed human arms, hands, and fingers. The site dates back nearly 6,000 years. The discovery of Bergheim is the witness of a very violent event, which took place at a specific time, said Fanny Chanel, an archaeologist at the University of Strasbourg. The pit, called Pit 157, was about five feet across and over six feet deep. At the bottom, there were severed upper limbs, including hands and arms, some belonging to a teenager. Cut marks on the bones showed these weren't accidents. Someone had used blades or axes. On top of that, the bodies of seven or more people of all ages were stacked in the pit. One middle-aged man had his arm chopped off and a head wound that probably killed him. And they weren't all from the same time. Over a thousand years later, so about 5,000 years ago, someone added the body of a woman on top. And there were no signs of trauma to her body, so why was she placed there? in such a long time afterward. Back in 2016, archaeologists digging near Athens at this old port called Phaleron came across a mass grave. People had known about some burials there for a while, but the newer digs turned up hundreds more, about 1,500 skeletons in total. Some were in jars, some in open pits. There were, was even a horse buried down there. One part of the grave was especially unsettling, though. Around 80 people were lined up together. 36 of them had iron shackles. Hands. All that said, I've been your host, James. I'll catch you, yes, you specifically next time. Mm -hmm.